now. Okay, so uh, the observer. So the thing uh, to note with the observer is um, first get a reading. If you're sitting, get a reading. Uh, the the you know you can always ask this in a slightly different way. What am I? How do I experience myself? Now this question isn't needed to be. You don't need to ask this question if you're infinite and in sublime bliss. But if not. You know, what am I? And, get, and then the first thing is, these are not intellectual, is to get a reading of your experience of your limited self in this moment. Is there <coughs> experiencing of body? Is there experiencing of thoughts? Are there feelings? Are there aches and pains? Um, is it more a mental thing that's going on? It, you know, is, does it feel like I am my thinking now? Does it feel like I am my body now? Does it feel like I'm an ache or a pain uh, that's going on? So what is it, what is my experience of myself in this moment? So this is an experiential question. It's not really asking your head to make a thesis on it. It's like, what's the visceral experience of self? So, okay, so then uh, the next thing to note is to realise this is what I'd call uh, experiencing oneself as being limited or as being an object. Yeah? So if you're not limitless, then if you say, well, I'm my body, or I'm, I'm, I'm this, I'm this uh, feeling in my mouth, or, or it just seems like I'm just a mental stream of thoughts in my head, that would be then uh, what is happening now with your experience of your limited self. The next thing to do, I mean, if you, you can either, uh, either do this on your own, or if, if you need guidance, you can always play one of my YouTube videos. I always say, like, uh, you know, get get the experience of, uh, you can get, to start with, if you want to, you can get the experience of an object in the room. Like if there's a mug on the table or something, or if there is a camera in the room or a mug or a book in the room. Uh, with observing an object, like if you're observing a mug, it's like when there's a pure, if there's pure observing of an object, it's very, very clear that the object is not you. You know, there's no one, you know, I always make the, the joke, like I'm holding up a mug. Is anyone in the room a mug? You see, and, and usually everyone says they're not the mug. And, uh, and so that's very good. The thing with a mug is it's a, it's a meaningless object. One of the things with a mug is, uh, for everybody, unless you're a mug addict, uh, it's a very, very meaningless, neutral object, which has no special meaning to it. There's no special meaning. And when there's no special meaning with an object, it can be observed, or there's registering of it, but there's absolute, there's what I call detached witnessing. The object is there, but it's not, nothing to do with the self of who I am. And also to note, even if, uh, so, <clears throat> also to note with objects, you know, objects can come and go, they can be hidden, uh, they can be here at one, t one time of the day or not be here at another time of the day, but they, there is no confusion that the object is what one is. So the next thing is, so one has that with a mug, or you can open your eyes and see that with whatever object. There is no confusion. There is pure observation, uh, uh, experiential observation that I am not a mug. And that's not a mental thing. The next thing to do... Now, the next thing to do will depend on whether it's more the thoughts or more the body that is more the experience, or it can be both. But I always like to start these, um, these introductions going to the, to the thinking first, because usually the thoughts is usually the more troubling one. If you can get clarity on observing the thoughts, the next bits are usually much easier. Um, so, thoughts passing by in consciousness. There can be a few thoughts, there can be many thoughts. Notice that thoughts are constantly flitting by, but a thought is like a discrete object. You know, if I, you have a thought like that says, like, oh, I, f I forgot to buy tomatoes. Well, that is, a, that is a discrete, that's a discrete thought form. So what observes or what is witnessing thoughts? So there has to be, if there's a cloud, in, if there's an obser observation of a cloud in the sky, and there's registering of a cloud passing by in the sky. The observer of the cloud is not the cloud. The observer, when a cloud, which is an object, passes by, 
uh, in the sky, the actual observer of the cloud passing by is not. There can be detached observing that a cloud is passing by, but is not, one is not the cloud that passes by. So thoughts. What, what is observing thoughts? You know, and then this has to be like a spiritual experience because this can't be like thinking about the answer. You can't think about the answer. The observer, so it's almost like there's, a, there's something in the background that witnesses thoughts passing by. And when you have that spiritual experience, it's like a aha. Yeah, you can let the thoughts go now. It's real, it, there is no longer any enmeshment with the thoughts, the field of thoughts. And so as soon as there is observing, there's distance from the thoughts, and then there can be releasing of the thoughts. Even if there's clouds passing by, it's got nothing to do with the self of who I am. So there's that dismissing of that, and that gets rid of a hundred problems. Because if you, stay in your, if you stay in the thoughts, then you can start visualizing things, trying to think about doing things, try to imagine things. And all of that is observed. Those are just different objects that are the path. Images, thoughts, trying to think about the problem, none of, all of that is just thoughts. So just, as soon as you're observing, let it go, let the thoughts go. The next thing is then, okay, is there any experience of the body? Depends. Like, you know, what am I? Is there, is it like, look, I just feel the shape of my body? Or is there any specific loud things that are going on? Like, is there like a, like a, a feeling in the mouth? Or is there, uh, is there, so there could be like a, an ache in the ankle or, or, or a knee pain or mouth pain, or there could be tension in the head. If those are the things, then I would go to those next because those are quite loud. But let's pretend there's like a, a throbbing feeling in the mouth. Okay, uh, so if it's a throbbing thing, well, that's, that's like an object, you know, it has a shape. And if there's a shape there, then there is that which is watching a shape. Anything that has a shape to it. So this is, what, this is one quick way of doing it. It's like, become aware of the shape. What is the limits of that shape? You know, is it in the head? Is it in the mouth? Is it like in the knee? So those are like little balls or little objects. So what's observing that shape? And then, you know, and, and then is there a detached observing of that shape? And as you go back, suddenly a space, there's a space between, there's an observing of that as a, as a, and there's a separation from that feeling in the body. And as soon as that happens, it will start to disappear. It'll start to get, it'll start not to be personal. It'll start to be like, something that's watched but is not me. And as soon as that watching happens, you'll find that these things will start to dissolve. It's like when there's invested interest or enmeshment with something, it sticks around. But as soon as there's a space and there's a detached observing, it starts, it starts to melt away. It loses its energy because there's detachment. And then if you want to dissolve it further, you can go to the observer of that observer. You know, is there an observer which has no interest in what's going on? even be behind that observer. And then these things start to fade away and they start to dissolve. You know, if, there, if it's just a feeling of, oh, there's just awareness of a body sitting here quite calmly, then the body has a shape. What's observing the shape of the body? So is there a witnessing of the shape? And, so if, and if this witnesser is still witnessing the shape, is there a witnesser of that witnesser where the shape starts to disappear? Or if there's a location, is there a witnesser of location? And the witnesser that witnesses location, is there any location to the witnesser of location? Other things to do, when you start to let go of the gross things, you can start to see if there's any subtle things going on. Is there a sense of time? Is there a tracking? Is something, you know, not necessarily tangible, but almost unconsciously tangible, noting time passing? And if there is that, what I call tracking of time, is there something which is observing time? Or is there an observer which is not interested in registering time? So let's see. And in that observing of the sense of time, does time exist in that which observes time? So as you're now starting to, to, to drop away all these things that, that are going on. So now, after you've gone through whatever it was that was showing up and you've gone to the observer or the detached observer, in this place now, you should be quite limitless and quite free. It's like, but is there any sense of limitation or constriction in after letting go of all of that and being in the witnesser of all of those things? 
And if there's any sense of something being limited, contracted, contracted, or has got a, a shape to it, like if it's like, oh, it feels like I'm limitless, but I'm li as limitless as the room. Well, that's got a limit to it. Well, okay, what's observing the limits of the room? Is there an observer of that which is as, lim which is as limitless as the room? And see if that observer has any limits. Now, another thing that can come up is sometimes there can be fluctuation. You can see one is like, oh, there's detached observing of the object and then stuck in the object, and there's detached observing and then stuck. So this fluctuation of in and out. Then all, the next thing to do, well, there is actually, you know, the fluctuation of something going in and out. I'm an object, I'm now the observer of the object. I'm an object, so that's that. There is actually an observer that observes fluctuations in and out. So go to this observer that registers fluctuations in and out. And in this observer, that, that, that is observing the fluctuation, is this observer free of fluctuation? And then get the experience of that observer. And so in this way, you're dissolving layer after layer of identification. The next thing to know, <clears throat> and I was uh, talking with an individual today about this, is like when you get to that limitless observing and stillness, and you've just unhooked from everything, you're disidentified with everything, you can always go deeper, even if you're in a deep witnessing state. Is there something even deeper? Let's say there's pure witnessing or there's oneness. You know, there's a feeling of absolute freedom and oneness. But there's also what I call registering of the world. Is there an observer of reg registering? Go, is there a deeper observer of that which picks up anything in this world? And go deeper within. If you keep going deeper, that can be the unfolding of what I call the mystical experiences, because you're dissolving all those things which hook in and tie you to a more limited experience of experience. Okay, with that, we're going to have about uh, two or three, we'll make it short, two or three minutes of silence, and then uh, we'll stop there.